Family bonds and friendship are worth celebrating all through the year. So why wait for the holidays? A dinner party is a great way to get together and here's a menu with a dash of heritage. Before the silly season begins, I've invited a few friends over for a home-cooked meal. I'm hoping to catch up on their latest news and I'm keeping the menu quite simple. On the menu, spicy battered fish, we've got nariel gauche or lamb cooked in a coconut sauce and for dessert, a chocolate ganache slice. I'm starting out with a simple lamb curry today. First ingredient going into the pot, some sunflower oil. I'm using a speed cooker for this and that's just to cut down on the cooking time. And for the whole spices, a large cinnamon stick, two bay leaves, about four cardamom pods. Remember to count these in and to count them out as well. About a teaspoon of mustard seeds and these splatter as soon as they hit the oil. And a pinch of cumin. Fry those spices until they're fragrant. Next ingredient, the chopped onion. To the onion, add a teaspoon and a half of coarse salt and saute those onions until they're light golden brown. Take your time when it comes to frying the onion. Once they're golden brown, they give off a lovely flavor and they thicken the gravy too. To this, I'm adding some curry leaves. This is quite an impressive lamb dish to prepare. The next ingredient, I've got ginger and garlic paste. I've used two parts ginger and one part garlic. This paste does look quite yellow and as a preservative, I've added a touch of turmeric, a little oil and a pinch of salt. Stir the paste around and once the moisture evaporates, add the red chili powder. I like it quite spicy, two to three tablespoons would do. Fry the red chili for a few seconds and careful not to burn the chili powder. It will ruin the flavor of your lamb curry. Next, add the lamb pieces. You could add shoulder or leg of lamb, but I love the flavor of lamb knuckles. Stir that through to coat and just keep stir frying. If the spices stick to the pan, use a wooden spoon and scrape the bottom. This is an important step when you're making the curry. It's always good to seal the meat in that spicy paste. The lamb sealed, ready for the powdered spices. I've got roasted cumin, coriander and garam masala, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, two teaspoons of ground coriander and a teaspoon of garam masala, half a teaspoon of turmeric, mix that around and the spices do turn quite dark in colour at the base of the pan, add the tomatoes. Quite a hot pan and the tomatoes start to thicken almost immediately. Keep scraping with a wooden spoon, add some brown onion. This is going to deepen the flavour and thicken the sauce as well. To this coconut milk and 125 ml of boiled water. One last stir. Remember not to add too much liquid when you are cooking with a pressure cooker. It will turn your curry into a soup. Let's seal the pot and let the steam do the work. The lamb's going to simmer for about 45 minutes, which is enough time for me to prepare the cake. For that, some cake flour going into a mixing bowl. To that sugar. Baking powder. Cocoa powder. Some orange zest. Soft butter. I gently work these ingredients together on a low speed. To this, add some milk, vanilla essence, and two large eggs. The batter's ready, smooth and chocolatey. I've got a 25 centimeter greased tin here and I've greased and lined this already. Bake this off at 170 degrees Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes. The lamb's been simmering for about 45 minutes. I'm releasing the pressure. Let's have a look. That's thickened beautifully. Slightly coming away from the bone, which means it is tender. Let's start with the fish. This quick and easy fish starter is a favorite amongst my family and my friends too. For this, we're starting out with red chili powder in a mixing bowl, a teaspoon of ground cumin, 
two teaspoons of coriander. I'm using roasted spices. And a large pinch of turmeric. Just mix those ingredients together. Next, in goes some salt. Using tongues, take a piece of fish and just toss it in that spice mixture. Place it back on the plate. I prefer using fish steaks for this recipe. You can use fillet, but fish steaks with the bone in, it does remind me of being at home in my mum's kitchen. To the same bowl, add some garlic, chickpea flour, fresh coriander, or should I say a sprinkle, and two teaspoons of aromatic garam masala. To this, a little water, and gradually add the water, making sure you whisk in between. A little more cold water going in. Once the batter is free from lumps, we're ready to fry the fish. I've preheated some oil already. Take the first piece, dip it into that lovely batter. In goes the next one. Turn the fish only once it's golden brown and the batter's set. This looks really tempting, well spiced and there's hints of fresh green coriander in there too. If you love fried fish but hate frying it because of all the splatters, adding a bit of chickpea flour to the batter prevents that from happening. The spicy battered fish is ready, the nariel gosh is also ready. I'm just going to finish up on the cake. To finish up on the chocolate ganache cake, I've heated up some cream and melted chocolate. Pour that over. The cake is still slightly warm. Work the chocolate over the top of the cake. Love the way it drips down the sides. I serve this chocolate ganache cake with fresh berries. You can use cherries, strawberries, raspberries, or even fresh figs. I've got some large cherries here. This looks really decadent. I've chosen a simple menu and I've got the cooking and baking out the way before my guests have arrived. I've just finished the chocolate cake and it looks absolutely delicious. We all know chocolate's everyone's favorite favorite. I'm serving spicy battered fish for a starter. For the main course, nariel gosh, and for dessert, a chocolate ganache cake. I encourage you to meet with your friends and catch up before the silly season sets in. For these recipes and more, check out the Mela Facebook page. It's time to serve my hungry guests.